Welcome to the next lecture of our GitHub Action course. So what we did in our last lecture was we just copy pasted something from here on the quick start guide and it actually executed within our repository, which was magical. And you can see that there is this name as GitHub Actions Demo and it has an on, there is a jobs and blah, blah, blah. But well, what are these things? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to expand this page a bit so that you can see it more clearly because it's very small on the screen or maybe like that okay and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do an edit and let's also try removing this whole thing so that i can write it one by one so that you can understand what i'm trying to do so for example if i want to create a workflow here I'm just going to give a name of the workflow. So the name of the workflow, for example, is going to be a basic workflow. So this is what is the name that I'm going to be creating. Or maybe we can give something like a Selenium test workflow. That's going to be even more intuitive that we can give. And you can see that every time when I give something, it's going to be also showing me that there is a missing required root key, something like that which is all right, we'll understand that pretty soon. But as of now, let it be over here. And then this particular workflow has to be triggered by any one of the event. And that can be a push event, or it can be a pull event, or it can be a pull request, something like that. So any workflow can be triggered using push or pull or whatever it is. So you can see that every time I type something over here like on, this is the keyword which is used to trigger and then I need to give a colon and then I need to give a space where I need to pass a string or an array type. So the string type is what is I'm going to be giving here as push or if you want to trigger this particular event for push as well as for the pull request then you can go something like push as well as the pull request something like this and this is legal as well so you can do whatever that you want to do so i'm just going to give a push for now and i need to have a job because this particular workflow has to be executed as a job and we can have multiple jobs which we'll be talking pretty much later in this course but as of now we are going to have only one job so i'm going to give a jobs here so because this, there are going to be multiple jobs, so we're going to have a jobs here and then I'm going to hit enter. And because we are going to be writing something below this particular jobs or a jobs, a particular job within the particular jobs, we need to give two spaces, something like this. And this is the YAML syntax itself. Basically, we need to give two space and then we need to give the name of the job. So we can give the name of the job something like the Selenium uh, test job one, something like that, and hit colon over here. So this is basically like a label of the job. And then we can give our uh, two space over here. And now we need to tell this particular job has to be executed on a particular environment basically as i told you this github actions can be executed on a runner so this runner can be our own local machine which can be deployed either in the cloud environment or local machine or even on the github's self-hosted virtual machines so the github self-hosted virtual machines are the one that we are going to be using throughout this course we're not going to be setting up anything on a local machine so this runners or the machines that we are going to be using are going to be called using what is called as a runs on keyword. So we need to give this runs on and we need to tell in which machine that we want to be executing. So basically, if you just go to the GitHub page over here on the actions page, and if you search for runners, you should see there are something called as about self hosted runners and about GitHub hoster runners. So let's go to the about GitHub hoster runners. And you will see that there are going to be a lot of runners available in the GitHub hoster runners. And these runners are basically a Linux and Windows runners on the standard DS2 underscore V2 virtual machines in the Microsoft Azure with the GitHub Actions runner applications installed in it. So this is what they are actually using. So this is one of the SKU in the Microsoft Azure 
that is being used for our execution and you can see that they have some details about that as well which you can probably read from this particular link and there are many different labels available to call which machine that you want to execute you can see that you can use windows server 2022 which is the most latest virtual machine which is available which is the most latest virtual machine server image that is available or you can use the windows server 2019 or windows server 2016 which is deprecated and you can use ubuntu latest to use the latest version of ubuntu i think 21 is the latest but they are using the lts version which is 20.04 and there is even the old version is available and they also support mac os 11 and the mac os latest is 11 and you can also use 10.15 for that matter so these are the labels or the one that you can actually use within the runs on so for example over here i'm going to be using the ubuntu latest which means it is going to be running this particular job using the ubuntu latest runner that's what is this whole runs on is all about and then we need to specify what are the steps that i need to be executing on this particular runner so i'm just going to say steps and then just hit enter do a double space and then give a command called as runs and this particular runs is basically going to tell me what I'm going to be doing. So if I want to do an echo, then I can do an echo operation. So basically what that really means is this echo is basically like a Linux command or a command that you wanted to be executing within the Ubuntu operating system. So you can just do something like an echo and then I'm going to say this is running inside probably. I'm just going to use an expression of the github action which is this dollar double braces if you just do that it is going to be an expression and you can actually use some other contexts of the github action which is like a runner context and then you can just use like runner.os which is going to give you what operating system that you are going to be executing uh, so this is running inside a this uh, server something like that for that example for this example in github probably so if i just say this one you can see that it is going to perform an echo operation for me and i'm just giving runs i'm sorry about that it should be run so if you just do a mistype there it's actually telling you an unknown key runs do you mean run which is correct i'm using the run there great so there is an intelligence also available within this edit file operation and it's going to help you to get started as well so at the moment i have just added only one run operation but you now got the idea right there is going to be a name of this particular workflow and there is going to be a trigger which is required and this is the jobs which is going to be holding multiple jobs for you probably you can also give what is called as a name which is going to be the name of the job so i'm going to say selenium test job something like this so in, instead of having the underscore underscore something like this i can just have a name there and then you can see this particular name is going to be displayed while the workflow actually execute so i'm just going to start the commit commit the changes and if i go to the actions you can see that the update basic dot yaml file is currently up and running and you can see that the selenium test job is executing it is starting the job and you will see that job has been executed as well For some reason the ui is not there so you can see that there was a setup operation happened this setup operation is all about it is setting up the runner for us which is nothing but the github actions runner so you can see that it has took an operating system environment of ubuntu for us because that's what we have specified and then it is also creating a virtual environment for us and it is also creating a virtual environment provisioner i don't know what that is and then there is a github token permission which is something related to your token which you have in the settings over there and then there is a secret source as action preparing the environments and stuff the setup operation is done and then the only command that we have given on the run is this run the echo command which has happened over here so you can see that this is running inside a linux server in the github so we just actually use the expression here like runner.os 
so it was actually linux so i just told that it's a linux server which is great and you can see that it was actually executing inside a shell script which was a bash command so this echo is basically a bash command which was executing inside that particular shell just cool and this is also running inside the linux server again so printing for us which is great and then there is the job being completed for us which is performing some cleanup of the orphan processes so that's about the whole github actions workflow and we pretty much understand what is this github actions workflows and stuff in our next video we'll go a bit heavy and we'll understand even further details of how we can customize this workflow and make use of github actions in a more better way